Your son is fine. He's gonna start working for us. Who is this? What do you want? Make sure he does what we say. If you don't, Tariq dies. We just saw episode three. Our man Tariq is putting his organization together just like his daddy Ghost. I guess we might as well start calling him Ghost Reek now because everything that was set up for his dad is now set up with Reek. He's got a little organization. He's got a supplier. And I feel just like what happened with his daddy, he's going to wind up having to kill a supplier the same way Ghost had to kill Lobos in the beginning. Decent episode. Wasn't a lot of fireworks. Wasn't bad. But just supplanted some things for what's going to happen in the future. And we are going to discuss it right now. Got my wife up here ready to do it. Hello. Shouts out to my baby girl, our firstborn, who is sleeping right now, letting us get this review in. But be warned, people. Crystal might have to go get her because she loves to wake up when we're doing these power reviews. Exactly. If you're finding us for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. We don't just do power. We do a lot of TV shows. We do politics. I'm also teaching people how to do the stock market on this channel, so you don't want to miss out on any of those. Tomorrow night, I go live. I go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night with Larry and some special guests. Jay Moore, I'm hearing you want to join the group. All you got to do is hit me up, and you'll be in. And before we get into the review... The people that put the makeup and that good hair on Tasha when she had to go to that fake ass trial. Color rain, ladies and gentlemen. They sent my wife this beautiful makeup she's wearing today. And that's who put that makeup on Tasha. Check the video description link. Honey, let's dive on into it. This episode starts out with Kane and Drew collecting Monet, or should I say Lorenzo Tejada's money. And we see Kane beating up the pole guy at the store because he didn't have all that money. Mm -hmm. Anything surprise you about that? No, no. It just tells you how far their organization is reaching. Um, so nothing new. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it just let it kind of introduced Drew's character a little more that he's level headed, um, almost too passive, in my opinion, to be in this game. But we learn a little bit more about him as they go along. Yeah, so it looks like they're they're playing good cop, bad cop. Where Kane is a bad mm -hmm. cop, Drew is a good cop. Right. And that's how they roll. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to tell y'all about Drew later on. All right, we'll move right along to the next scene. This was straight from the trailer. Monet walks in wanting to know why, the, why her three kids are gathered around talking about something. What they was talking about is the GTG Negroes flossing all their money. Now, now, what do we as black people say? Because, you know, we, we go off the cuff here. Do we not get mad when we see other black people flossing something that they shouldn't be flossing? Like, r running around here, you, you, okay, like, for example, somebody driving a beat-up car, but they on YouTube throwing around $1,000 bands, yeah. right? You know, yeah. you're living with your mama, you're living in a basement, and you flashing all this money and all these high dollar clothes. What yeah. what I are mean, you doing? Some people live by the mantra you gotta fake it to make it. I don't know, you know, it, how much you buy into that, but some people gotta fake it to make it. See us us old heads know be quiet about your money, be reserved about your money, and if you're really making that much money, you ain't gotta tell nobody about it. Mm -hmm. And so for Monet of course she don't like that because that's going to bring attention to her organization. Right. They're going to ask where you getting the money from. Yep. Um, start tracing back to, mm -hmm. to the source. Who does, who does she want to go down there and talk to the GTG niggas? Who does she want of her three kids? The GTG Negroes. Negroes. <laughs> um, that ain't what Monet said. Um, I mean, she want the one who she sure can handle it. She want Drew. She, she wanted Drew, no. She sent Drew down there to talk to them. But she wanted Kane to go. She wanted Kane to follow Drew, Drew to protect Drew, it. right? But the daddy wanted Drew to go. Mm. Be, and first of all, the dad Monet wants to cut them off anyway. Mm -hmm. And the dad was like, "Hell to the no!" Because somebody took a bullet for him. Mm -hmm. Send Drew, and the daddy. Uh, the daddy knows his kids. He knows Drew is soft. Yeah, he, somewhat. Well, he I didn't guess. say soft. He. I think the daddy knows Drew is a damn mama's boy. Uh -huh. That's what his problem. So but yeah, the choose between the mama's boy and then the, the hothead. You send Drew, 
And plus, he's trying to rear Drew into yeah. being the next leader because Kane is Kane is. Some of y'all have said Kane is like Tommy, hot headed, irrational. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And so the mama sends Drew, but of course she sends Kane to watch his back. And then we'll pick back up when that story in a minute. Okay, so now you've got Tasha and Davis McLean. Tasha Davis McLean is telling Tasha, "You're lying to us," and we know she's lying, mm -hmm. right? And he's basically telling her, it's not the truth that matters. Mm -hmm. And Tasha says, well, put me on the witness stand. Davis McClain investigator is like, mm -hmm. how did you think that was going to happen? You knew that wasn't going to go well. I mean, Tasha, just like her son, feel like they can talk their way out of anything and, and sell whatever facade they want to sell to the public or to whoever they need to, whoever they need to influence. Mm -hmm. But you know it wasn't going to go well. We got a lot of these damn shade tree mechanics on this show, huh? Very overconfident. <laughs> they think they can yeah. sell water to a drought. We got right. a lot of them. Davis McLean is one. Tariq is one. Tasha is one. Right. Cooper Sacks is one. Mm -hmm. Apparently, mm -hmm. Mo um, Diana Tejada is mm -hmm. one. We've got a lot of them up here that All think, these yeah, talkers. <laughs> yeah, man, they think they got the golden tongue, but the only one who got that is me. Ain't that right, honey? Go on, Lamont. <laughs> Next, Tasha meets up with the inmate that needed the morning after pill. And we knew that was going to happen. It wasn't nothing special about that. But what was going on that was special was there was someone taking a picture of the two when they were sitting there talking. And we later find out, as I knew from the very minute I saw it, he's working for Lorenzo Tejada. Right? He's working for her. Now, Lorenzo is trying to figure out how far does her power go? Because he thought she was screwing the CO and, and realizes through that photo, she's not screwing anyone. She gave that pill to somebody else. Mm -hmm. What was you thinking was Lorenzo's intentions for Tasha if she was going to take the pill? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. He was surprised himself that she didn't take it. So I think he's just trying to piece it together as well. I, I, when, when he seen that she didn't take it, I think he realized she's a mover and a shake. She's a thinker. Mm -hmm. You know, he realized like, okay, she's not taking it. She's not screwing nobody's CO. And she's giving it to somebody else. And she risked a whole lot to get this. Mm hmm and she's not going to take it. She's giving. So I think at that moment in time, he knew that she was a mover and a shaker. She could be a mover and a shaker, or she could just be, uh, you know, trying to cover her butt. Because how do you? How does he know that somebody ain't in there trying to intimidate her or bully her or whatever mm -hmm. into doing what they need need her to do? So that's he, another angle. It could be, and it could just be that he just wants to know everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. He's just nosy as hell, like my grandma, want to know everything that's going on, but can't chase nothing. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do, Grandma? Run it. You nose as hell, but you you know you can't run but a half a mile an hour, mm -hmm. boy. Mm, 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 mm. Then they come and get Tasha out of her jail cell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and at the moment, we don't know where Tasha is going. <laughs> Nobody knows. The only thing they think it's something bad because it's like when they come get you this quick, it's never good. Mm -hmm. We then find out Tasha's going to a mock trial staged by Davis McLean, and they go in there and put on all this makeup. Tasha's like, I can't go in there and let them see me like this. And then my wife wanted to compliment. They put Tasha in all that makeup. Shouts out to Colored Rain, ladies and gentlemen. Link is in the video description. But did you see that lace front they gave her? Oh, yeah, they did it up. They spent her money well. <laughs> that, that lace front was so nice. Even Tamika had to compliment that lace front. Uh -huh. Got her. They, they, they. She went in there looking like Little Red Riding Hood, and she came out looking like a model. They got her good. Mm -hmm. So they dressed her up so that she could have the appeal for the mock trial. And again, spending her money very well. <laughs> yeah, because because she's paying for all this exactly. stuff. Um, then they dig into the mock trial. Mm -hmm. Davis McLean is asking her questions as her counsel, mm -hmm. and he asked her some tough questions. Yeah. And she seemed like she handled his part pretty well. Of course. Those he, are the easy part. They're always going to handle the... the they're, <laughs> they're always going to handle them, them questions well because <laughs> Davis is on her team. Well, I felt like Davis made it hard. He made it hard. He, because 
He was trying to paint a picture, ladies and gentlemen, to the jury. He's painting a picture mm -hmm. of a poor, dialed upon wife who was just so in love, she was blinded mm -hmm. by the things her man was doing. She couldn't see that because she was so in love. Mm -hmm. All I could think of was all for one, so in love. Uh -huh. She was so in love, her eyes was blind. And she stepped right into that role and sold the picture. Yeah, 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 she did it, she uh -huh. did it. She did it, she looked meager, she looked meek. Tasha, your ass can act, and you can sing too. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. Um, and we'll come back to that in a minute because that was just part one. Mm -hmm. That was the easy part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, what's the next part? What happened then? What we'll happened talk then? about that in a minute. Things happened in the show before that. So then we see Brayden and Reek meet up. And, and we knew that at some point in time, the two was going to hook up to start making this money. And so they're meeting up in front of the pediatrician's clinic right. <laughs> to talk about how Brayden is going to be housing scripts to get some money so that him and Reed can do a little party. Um, and the, the guy that was the DJ at the brother's party is the one selling the drugs. Mm -hmm. So the plan here is when Braden gets the scripts and gets the drugs, mm -hmm. Reed is going to send his stripper friend who's helping him out to tie up that brother and that brother fell for it. Like Crystal said, who the hell has an anonymous stripper show up to your house and then you let her ass handcuff you? Right. What would you do if I told you, Crystal, you at work, the baby at daycare, some stripper show up here saying, your friend sent me and I let her come in here. Not only do I let her come in, mm -hmm. I let her sit me down and handcuff you me to something. You wouldn't tell me that. The cameras would tell you if I didn't. You wouldn't tell me I that. would tell you. There's cameras in this house. I ain't going to sit no, here and lie about it. you would say she tried to come up in here. Oh. And she ain't get past the first the front door. Uh, well, 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 homegirl looked like, she, Epiphany looked like she wasn't having it. She was getting in the house. Uh -huh, but you ain't having it either. You ain't having it more. Uh, what I'm supposed to do? Hit her? Whatever you got to do. Okay. <laughs> you can figure that one out. Yeah, I ain't got to yeah. tell you. Any event, any event, she made it happen. Braden and Reek made a lot of money next thing <laughs> i told y'all that they was portraying zeke as a dumb basketball player but y'all tried to fight me on that y'all tried to fight me i told y'all i was a college athlete i've seen this stuff firsthand they portray him as a dumb athlete he's on probation and i had to kind of he's he's on probation from playing yeah. basketball because of his grades and now the white dude is the next best thing on the team who's thinking that he's going to get a shot at the NBA, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So coach comes in there and tells him, look, man, um, I just need you to show up for the press conference. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to say nothing. And this is when we just see really how much of they, they're portraying the stereotype of dumb job. He didn't even know what to say in the press conference. Yeah, I was trying to give Zeke the benefit of the doubt. The doubt. There are a lot of smart athletes out there, and I'm trying to push him as, oh, you know, don't don't be too hard on him. But he has some of the goofiest looks in this, in this episode. And, yeah, he looking, was... A, he looking was a, like Eddie Winslow. He was a stereotypical dumb jock. Yep. So, I can't, I can't defend that. Sorry. No, you always be trying to defend stuff that's non-defensible. I look for the good. Yeah, you do. And I'm Batman. I look for the bad. She's mm -hmm. Superwoman. She looks for the good. I'm Batman. I look mm -hmm. for the bad. Then, we get on with more of this dynamic with Tariq having his little crush on Diana. And... I feel like Monet kind of sensed that anyway. So she's out there talking to Diana and we realized that Diana could actually play basketball. She's good. Mm -hmm. she's, she's good. That's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah. She wants to go to school. She wants to play ball. And Monet lays down the law. She's like, look, how that's going to help the family? Mm -hmm. Monet is controlling everything. She's got Drew doing his thing. She's got Kane doing his thing. And she's got Diana sitting right there at the behest of her not letting her go to school, chase her dream. And Diana challenged her on. Diana's like, well, Zeke is doing it. Mm -hmm. And what did Monet say? She said Zeke ain't her child. Zeke is not her child. Mm -hmm. And Zeke is going to the NBA. Yeah, so he's going to make bank. He's going to make bank. You going to the WNBA only brings home 75 stack. Uh -huh. Which is, ladies and gentlemen, for you people who are young people and you need to separate TV from reality, $75 is plenty good money. $75,000 $75, is plenty good money a year if you know how to live below your means. That's plenty good money. And especially if you live in a state like North Carolina. Or Ma manage your money to, to increase that. 
living, you can be living below your means and invested. Right. Yeah. So don't let don't let Monet ruin your dreams and thinking you got to hustle. All right. Now, when I was looking at this, I was asking myself, now wouldn't a mother want their daughter out of the game? She's basically trying to keep her in that life uh, for the rest of her life. She is doing the opposite of what James was doing to Tariq. Right. The she complete opposite. Pulling a, is she not pulling a Tasha? She's pulling a Tasha. Yeah, she's pulling a Tasha. She this, wants so this is two mothers over two seasons coercing their children to be in the game. Right. Yeah. But at least Tasha had the, the forethought to say, Tariq, you need to go to school, too. Mm -hmm. Tasha, you know what? So Tasha felt like because Tariq was going to do it anyway, she was going to help her. She mm -hmm. was going to help him. Monet is basically is saying, doing the opposite. Yeah, you don't her, have a choice. Her daughter don't want to do it. Right. But, yeah. You're going to do it. All that whole conversation was said to say, Monet does not want her daughter fraternizing with Tariq. She tells her, you stay away from him. You don't tell him nothing about this family. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, Mo that's what Diana was getting at the whole time. Mm -hmm. She wanted to get a little closer to Reed. Yeah. And Monet ain't having none of it. Then the very next clip of the show, we see them going to the basketball game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was pulled right from the trailer, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all follow my trailer reviews, I pointed out, is there basketballs behind Tariq's head? And it sure was, because they was going to the game. And when they, they had to go through metal detectors to get into the game, it, it, Tariq wanted to go, and he asked uh, Monet, can he get in? Diana's looking at him with the sad eyes with them contacts. And Monet was like, only two, and left Tariq ass ain't, outside. Ain't even acknowledge, you ain't Did, even worth an acknowledgement. Didn't even <laughs> acknowledge him, because she doesn't trust him yet. Right. She still has trust issues. I mean, he too eager. Every scene he asks about Monet, Monet, Monet. Yeah. But Mo too, yeah. Monet don't know he's asking about I mean, Monet, but Monet. But eventually she gonna she find out a word, get back to her, or whatever. I but think as of right now, Monet just don't want her daughter to get caught up in puppy love. If you popping up everywhere, you too eager. He popping up with Zeke. He trying to get it, get in with uh with Mo with uh what's her name? Diana. Diana. So yeah, you too eager. Well, any event. The, the coach sees Monet come in. Coach pulls her to the side. Diana slithers right on over there in that comfort zone where she want to be at with that old player Tariq. Tariq is moving up the scales, ladies and gentlemen. He's working his channels. And she is over there singing like a mockingbird. Giving, oh, my goodness. Give, giving Reek all the family right. business. You, right. Everything Monet said not to say. She, she said it. She, see, now sometimes that's the power of penis. Okay. We always talking about the power of panty draws. That was the power of penis. Mm -hmm. Tariq said that. Mm -hmm. And from that whole thing of, of the, the speech between Tariq and Diana, Tariq, in essence, tells Diana what Lauren told Tariq earlier in this episode when Tariq was challenging the professor. You got to tell them what they want to hear. You got to tell them what they want to hear. <laughs> which is the way people treat our damn president, which is not a good way to be living, ladies and gentlemen. If you are someone of substance and power, you do not need to have yes people surrounding you. You need to be able to be a discerning individual and know when someone is telling you something that you don't want to hear that can help you. Mm -hmm. Right. But in any event, Tariq gave her that information and what did Diana do? Diana whips out that her burner phone, calls her daddy mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to, to get on mama's case. Right. <laughs> and we'll pick back up with that in a minute. So now we get back to Drew, to mama's boy Drew, baby boy Drew. Drew meets up with the GTG leader. <laughs> and when they met up, dude was sniffing cocaine off his gun. I mean... He, he's trying to, he's really trying to live up this I'm hard life. Mm -hmm. Sniffing cocaine off a gun, Instagramming every five minutes or whatever he's on, but, Snapchatting. But can't complete his own sentences. His girlfriend got to chime in and complete his sentences for him. <laughs> you, you would have to throw that in there, wouldn't you? I mean, she was. <laughs> she was. In essence, Drew tells Homeboy, look. Because Homeboy's like, your mama don't like me anyway. He tells Homeboy, he's like, look, man... Can you just chill out with the Instagram? Mm -hmm. You know, my, my mama's throwing you the olive branch. She likes what she's doing. Just chill out on the Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
Not only do homeboy disrespectfully says, nah, I ain't gonna do it. He whips his phone out immediately, starts doing it, and then is gonna turn around and try to put Drew in. Drew smacks the phone out of his hand. Mm -hmm. And then homeboy tried to step to him, about to pull out his gun. Drew all slow. Drew acted like he didn't want to put his hand behind his back to reach for his gun. Mm -hmm. Who comes to save the day? Daddy Kane. Daddy Kane. <laughs> Even though it's his brother, we're going to call him Daddy Kane. Wait, I think I hear, hear something, but go ahead. Okay, so Daddy, K Daddy Kane comes in there to save the day. Everybody respects Kane. Everybody's afraid of Kane. And Kane basically is like, <laughs> what you think you're going to do? And before they leave, Kane shoots three, four bullets in the sky. Oh, Lord, it is her. The baby is awake. Good gracious. We can't even get through these. And little L decides, I want to get in on this camera, too. But in the event, shoots a couple of bullets up in the ceiling. And when they leave out, the police is right there waiting on them. Just like, what's going on? And they start running. The passenger cop gets out. And look who's driving the car. Oh, Rico Suave Ramirez, the one who's sleeping with Monet. And he got that look on his face like somebody done put some poop underneath his nose like, oh, man, I'm screwed. It's Monet's kid. Well, go ahead and feed her. We'll fit. Bye, y'all. We'll let the people see the baby first. Since you're going to feed her, you might as well let them see the pretty baby because, you know, some folks want to see the baby. Here's the baby. There, there's the baby. She's awake from her sleep. Hey, baby. Hey, you awake now? That's a bright light, huh? Hey, all right. Go back in there and eat. So then we get on to that press conference, and Zeke is having a little bit of turmoil with the basketball player who's supposed to be the second best on the team, the Connor kid. <laughs> Because the Connor kid is thinking that Zeke ain't going to get a chance to get back on the team. And during that press conference, um, I've never seen it where a coach allows another player to throw the other player under the bus. Zeke basically throws Connor under the bus. Nobody is cheering but his mom. Which I wonder will that come back to bite him in the butt. So after that... Ramirez goes to Monet and is like, look, your kids could have had a bad situation if I didn't save them. He saved them because the cop was getting ready to see them turn that corner and he basically saved them. And he wants Monet to lay low. And as Monet is about to get him them sweet panty draws, the daddy texts. <laughs> the daddy texts and is like, uh, I need to see you the next day. And moving right along through the story, then we get back to the trial. Now Tamika shows up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Tamika's lace front was looking equally as good as Tasha's lace front. I mean, both of them was tight as hell. I mean, it's so tight, you can see Abraham Lincoln crying on them pennies. It was a tight wig. And she's playing the role of Cooper Sacks in the trial. And when I say she went hard at Tasha, man, she went hard at Tasha. She brought up the love triangle with Terry Silver. She brought up Tasha's jealousy toward Angela and how Ghost went back to Angela even after the death of Raina. She brought out um, how Rodriguez knows the whole entire story and can tie it together. And eventually, she even brought up Larry's favorite girlfriend, Ramona Garrity. Cut to be more careful. I hope they keep Tosh, I mean, Tamika in this story somehow, some way. Because her character brings a lot. She's been around power for a long time. Like seeing her in the story. And she looked like she lived too. But she delivered a, a scathing rebuttal to what Davis McClain said. And the whole entire jury ruled against Tasha. Damn. It was so bad that Davis McClain asked Tamika to join the team. And Tamika said no, but Davis McClain had his investigator, who is starting to play a, a, a bigger role in the show, investigate Tamika, and he knows that Tamika represented Cooper Sacks. Y'all remember last season, she represented Cooper Sacks when his ass was called up in everything. And at the end of the day, Tamika is going to play some kind of a huge role in this story. I don't know if she's going to join Davis McClain. 
I don't know if she will somehow or another make another pat with Cooper Sacks, who she really, really hates. But somehow or another, she's going to drop that gavel. I would love for them to let her somehow or another become a judge. That would be TV. So now, Lorenzo done got Monet to meet up with him in his C block, having a conjugal visit. He lets her know that, hell, he ain't happy with the way she conducting business. You know, he wasn't all that thrilled that Kane went up and shot up the place. And basically, he tells her, you baby and Drew. And he also tells her to let Diana go to school. And Monet is not having it. Monet is not all that thrilled about that, but she doesn't reject her man. She basically goes back and says, okay, I'll do what you tell me to do. But she ain't thrilled about it. And Lorenzo's basically laying down the law on Monet that, look, look, I want my daughter to go to college. I want Kane to just basically be the enforcer for the family. And Drew is the, is the one with the mind. You need to quit babying him because he's going to have to be the leader. Obviously, R Lorenzo thinks that Drew has the, the better temperament and maybe the better mindset to keep the organization going. So we're going to have to follow that one because I can see a breakdown between Monet and Lorenzo. And a lot of y'all already think that Monet put Lorenzo in jail in the first place because he's in there for life. The professor Jabari meets up with Reed because Reed got a non-complete on his paper and it wasn't the white professor grading. The white professor basically said, I don't have enough time to do this petty ante stuff. You know, this is not my pay grade. It's below my pay grade. So I don't grade papers. I was... <laughs> okay, slave mentality, huh? So Jabari grades the papers. Tariq confronts him. And basically Jabari is giving him a story about how we as black people, we've got to be two times as better than white people because of the institutional racism that have been put everywhere in America, including in college. And I want you to be who you are, is what Jabari is telling Tariq. You know, because Tariq took Lauren's advice and was trying to placate the first professor, the white professor. And Jabari, gray in the papers, didn't want to hear it. He wanted Reek to make the eloquent statements he was making in class he wanted him to put that on the paper. And Reek feels like that wouldn't have worked because he thought the white guy was grading the papers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in real life, there are times you got to be true to who you are and there are times you got to clean up and be professional. Which way is this story going to go with Tariq? That's all we want to know. And then we get back to Drew. Ladies and gentlemen, am I wrong in saying Drew's the mama's boy? He's a little soft. He's a little light in the hind parts. He two bricks short of being 100 pounds. How quickly are they going to be able to rear him? Can you guys see tension between Kane and Drew? I guess we'll have to keep watching. But M Monet really wants her wants Kane to be the, the head of the cartel. And we'll just have to see how that goes. Now getting back to Professor Carey, because we all want to see Professor Megram. She's been avoiding Jabari. Because of what the conversation she had with her um, therapist last, not, excuse me, not her therapist, her don't, her, um, her sponsor from Sex Anonymous. Her sponsor told her to stay away from Jabari. Well, lo and behold, Jabari's student is in his office talking about the book he wrote about Carrie called Raw. And I wonder what details are in that book. What would have you name a book Raw? Hmm. Can somebody get a copy of that fake book and tell me what's in it? Because if it's raw, I bet it's unabridged and really, really raw. And she read it and was calling him a romantic and she wanted his penis. And she started messing around with him while Carrie walks in. Carrie is hearing the moaning and the groaning and the banging and the clanging next door. And she also hears that girl say his name. The girl is his graduate student. Jabari's got an issue with fraternizing with people in his workplace. That can get you fired and can get you in a lot of trouble. He's already fraternized with Carrie, his coworker. Now he's fraternizing with a graduate student. Now, yes, they're all adults and adults can consent to sex. So there's nothing wrong with that. But it can also cost you your job when you're doing this on the job. 
But the question we all want to know is, Carrie is just like anyone with addiction a problem. You keep her away from the thing that feeds the addiction. If you're an alcoholic, you stay away from alcohol. If you're a fatty, you stay away from fatty foods and, and eating a lot. Her issue is sex. And when she hears them having sex, me and Crystal looked and said, hmm, do she want to go? Do she want to join in? Or do she want to beat up the girl and replace her? You guys leave me comments on which one you think Professor Carey wanted to do. Now that we're winding up to the end, Tariq gives Zeke an impassionate speech and says, look, me doing my work and your work ain't going to work. I need you to do me a favor. And if you want me to stay in school, you're going to have to help me out. So he coerces Zeke into giving him five minutes with Monet. So Monet comes to college. She gets in the room. She's in there. Zeke leaves out. Tariq throws her the bag of money that him, Braden, and Epiphany made in hours. And Monet at first is trying to act like she don't want to give up the information. Now, for someone who's supposed to be a drug cartel leader, she sure enough gave up them draws information quick, didn't she, y'all? Because that conversation lasted three minutes in total. I timed it. And she goes from, I don't trust you, to, okay, you can join my organization. But I call the shots. All right? So she lets Tariq into the organization. Monet is going to become Tariq's connect. After that scene, we see Monet talking to Lorenza about what is Tariq's weakness. Monet says Tariq is the weakness. But in all honesty, I thought that she was talking about Diana, but I guess she doesn't realize that because the person that they think is Tariq's weakness is his mother. And ladies and gentlemen, look who's back at the very end of the story <laughs> is baby L. Hey, L. Hey, sweet pea. We're at the end of this show now. <laughs> and the real weakness is Tariq's mom. And so Lorenza and Monet put in a call to Tasha. And basically Lorenza says, you're going to have my, you're going to have your son do what I want him to do or else he's going to die. And they leave with Tasha having that bewildered look on her face. Like, so whoa. Tasha is Tariq's weakness mm -hmm. and Zeke is the Tejada family's weakness. You think Zeke is the Tejada family's I weakness? Think so. Because everybody's looking out for him. Monet is investing in him, I, going to games. They trying to protect him too much, I think. I, I think he's expendable. I think if, he, if they gotta choose between their drug business and Zeke, they cutting his ass loose. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're family. If they're treating him kind of like he's family. They are. But if yeah. they got to choose between their business and him, they cutting yeah. him loose. Yeah, But he's still a weakness for them because they're doing their best to look out for what, him. What you try to say is he is a weakness, he, not them. He is a weakness. I would say he's a weakness because... He's a weakness for for, um, hey, for Monet. He's a, hey, sweet pea. He's just a weakness himself uh -huh. because first of all, he, Monet done told him not to have nobody else coming up around. Don't bring nobody around. Yeah. He still got her a meeting with Tariq. Yeah. He's but, a weakness. But she also looked out for him at the party when everything was going down. The first thing she said was get him back to school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think before the end of the season is over, though, I predict that he's going to be sacrificed one way oh, or another. Yeah, it's, it, I think and he might be crossed by Tariq. There's going to be several deaths this season. I think there's going to be at least three deaths. There's already been one, but nobody cares about Frank. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be at least three deaths this season. And I think Zeke is one of them. So, ladies and gentlemen, post me all your comments down below. We will be going live tomorrow night, possibly having a special guest from Power, either tomorrow night or Wednesday night. But either way, we go live, me and Larry, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. We're taking phone calls on Wednesday, probably on Friday. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to the channel. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. L, you want to say something to the people or you just want to yawn to the people? <laughs> <laughs> and until that next sex is hell video, we'll see you.